You can't lose confidence in yourself, or you've lost already. When you get knocked down, you've got to keep getting back up. Talk about your blessings more than you talk about your burdens. Success comes in a lot of ways, but it doesn't come with money and it doesn't come with fame. It comes from having a meaning in your life, doing what you love and being passionate about what you do. That's having a life of success. When you have the ability to do what you love, love what you do and have the ability to impact people. That's having a life of success. That's what having a life of meaning is. I don't know what my future holds, but I do know who holds my future. You and I were created by God to be so much more than normal, following the crowd is not a winning approach to life. In the end it's a loser's game, because we never become who God created us to be by trying to be like everybody else. Don't be normal. Be an example. If you believe, sometimes unbelievable things are possible. When you die there's going to be a tombstone. It's going to have your name. It's going to have the year you're born and the day you die. In between there's going to be a dash. And that dash is going to represent everything you did in your life, good and bad. That's how you're remembered. What do you want your dash to represent? Something I learned early in college, is, to not worry about what I can't control but what I can control is my attitude, my effort, my focus every single day and that's what I'm trying to worry about. Mom used to quote Isaiah 64, about waiting on the Lord. It doesn't mean being complacent. It means understanding that he has a plan, and that we're not the ones in control. In the meantime, we need to strive to use our gifts and abilities fully. For me, my goal is to be able to impact as many people as possible for something good, for something right, to be able to leave a legacy of something bigger than myself, not for winning games, not for scoring touchdowns, but that Jesus Christ has changed my life. You can love God, and you can love people. There's more to this world than money, fame, and power. You can have an impact, no matter who you are, no matter what platform. No matter how big or small of a role model, there's someone watching you. There's a life that you can change. There's a life that you can impact. If I didn't work as hard as I could, then I think it would be a bit like saying, God, thanks for giving me this ability, but I don't really care about it. I'm going to do something else, and I'm not going to work quite as hard. Every time I step on the field, I'm going to give my whole heart regardless of the score. We can control a few things, our attitude, our effort, our focus and how we go about treating our teammates. Don't worry about what you can't control. Our focus and energy needs to be on the things we can control. Attitude, effort, focus these are the things we can control. I want to make someone's life better because I'm here. If you have that attitude it will change your day and change your life. Along the way there's going to be a lot of obstacles, a lot of adversity, a lot of people who will tell you you're not good enough. I'm here to tell you that you are. Everyone that tells you that you're not is because they didn't accomplish something. For me, it's to be able to see that every life matters. Every life matters, no matter where, no matter how big, no matter how small. I've been able to see that in so many of the trips that we've taken around the world. That's been something that's been so eye-opening to me. I share that concept with everyone I come in contact with, so that we can unite around people. We can unite around one nation under God here, and we can unite that everybody matters. I think in this day and age right now, it's important. People need to be able to see something bigger than themselves. It's not the dreamers that are remembered, it's the doers. 
I have so many things to work on, and so many ways that I fail. But that's what grace is all about. And I constantly wake up every morning trying to get better, trying to improve, trying to walk closer to God. Regardless of what happens, I still honor my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, because at the end of the day, that's what's important, win or lose, we need to get back to one nation under God and be role models for kids. We have to humble ourselves and the way you do that is by serving other people. It's okay to be outspoken about your faith. For me, it's a great opportunity on a public platform to get on your knees and humble myself and thank the Lord for all the blessings he's put in my life. On the field I'm trying to play for the glory of God but then also I'm trying to give everything I have, win, and compete. And so I think more than just winning or losing, I think he cares about where our hearts are when we're playing. Where we start to lose it is when we start to grasp onto what we think is ours. No, this is mine. No, that's my career. That's my money. That's my platform. But really, no, it's yours, God. It's not mine. You might lend it to me for a little while. You might let me hold on to it. You might let me use it for a little bit, but that's not mine, it's yours. Thank you for letting me use that for a little while. I think that's what staying grounded means. People often seem to think that when you're following the Lord and trying to do His will, your path will always be clear, the decisions smooth and easy, and life will be lived happily ever after and all that. Sometimes that may be true, but I've found that more often, it's not. The muddled decisions still seem muddled, bad things still happen to believers, and great things can happen to non-believers. When it comes to making our decisions, the key that God is concerned with is that we are trusting and seeking Him. God's desire is for us to align our lives with His word and His will. There are several things that keep me grounded and focused. When you can humble yourself to say I'm no more important than anyone else. I just have a gift. If you're married, and you have a wife, and you really love your wife, is it good enough to only say to your wife I love her the day you get married? Or should you tell her every single day when you wake up and every opportunity? And that's how I feel about my relationship with Jesus Christ is that it is the most important thing in my life. I'm not perfect. And who knows how many times I've fallen short. We all fall short. That's the amazing thing about the grace of God. I'm blessed, because of my faith, that I don't have to worry about the future because I know who holds my future. As a competitor and an athlete, you have to believe in yourself. And you have to believe in the people who believe in you. And so I look at it as a relationship that I have with him that I want to give him the honor and glory any time I have the opportunity. And then right after I give him the honor and glory, I always try to give my teammates the honor and glory. And that's how it works because Christ comes first in my life, and then my family, and then my teammates. I don't try to focus on anything that doesn't affect me personally and how I go out there every single day. I'm just going to continue to work hard and focus on what I can control. No matter what happens, you're always going to have those critics and those haters. You just have to learn how to deal with that. I have and accept that. I'm not perfect. I'm never going to be. And that's the great thing about living the Christian life and trying to live by faith, is you're trying to get better every day. You're trying to improve. You can be extremely bright and still have dyslexia. You just have to understand how you learn and how you process information. When you know that, you can overcome a lot of the obstacles that come with dyslexia. When you figure out how you learn, you can accomplish whatever you want. 
Honestly, I'm just trying to do the best I can with every opportunity I am given, and when I'm given the opportunities make the most of them. Don't worry about what you can't control. I can't control the naysayers. I can control my attitude and work ethic and determination and that's what I'm focused on now. It's pretty easy for me to say that the most important thing in my life is my relationship with Jesus Christ, followed by my relationship with family, and footballs later on down the line. I'm just thankful for everything, all the blessings in my life, trying to stay that way. I think that's the best way to start your day and finish your day. It keeps everything in perspective. Just keep believing. This is an opportunity where great things can happen and let's be great right now. I don't know that I am a great leader at all, I just know I really care about what I do. You just try to be nice to everybody and treat them all the same. Treat them how you would want to be treated. I think staying grounded is one of the hardest things we'll ever do in our lives. It's always back and forth. To be able to stay grounded, we need to live with open hands that everything that we have has been given to us by the creator of this universe. He can take it, and he can give it back to us. He can take some things, and he can give us new things. When a door closes, a new one is going to open. If you believe then unbelievable things can sometimes be possible. Strong leaders encourage you to do things for your own benefit, not just theirs. I feel like the closest that we get to fulfilling our calling is making a difference in other people's lives. I feel like it's different for everybody. Our purpose and our calling are different. We're all called to do different things. But some way, somehow, it has to be impacting other people. If not, what are you doing? How does it have an impact? How does it have an eternal impact? It has to be investing in other people, somehow making a difference in their lives. When we do that, I really believe that we'll fulfill why we're here and what we're supposed to do. Whatever avenue I feel like I can make a difference in, I'd love to do. But, but the greatest way to witness is by walking that straight and narrow and also realizing that you're going to mess up. That's what grace is for. We're going to fall, but we've got to get back up. And you've got to improve. And that's what I'm all about. Which quote did you like the most? Share your opinion in the comments below. Subscribe and don't miss out the chance to see the next video.